I'm Gelsey Bell. I'm singing in the opening night of the Resonant Bodies Festival in the nine o'clock hour. I'm performing five songs. The first one is a song called Cradle that was part of a song cycle I wrote called Our Defensive Measurements. The idea is that everyone in the audience is as close to me as possible and I'm in the middle of the audience. And that's with Metallophone. Then I'm also doing another one of my songs called The Scientists Say. And that is from a song silk I wrote called Scaling that's all about a singer engaging with the piano and a percussionist engaging with the piano. So I play the piano with my arms, but from behind. So it's not your normal, here's the piano in front of me kind of thing, but it's behind me and I'm flapping around. And then I'm going to perform a song by Robert Ashley, Love is a Good Example. And that's a solo piece that he uh, did a lot in the later two decades of his life. It's a really beautiful piece and it's very simple. And if people don't know his work, it's kind of a good starter. <laughs> and then um, there are two other songs, both from pieces that I'm in in New York this fall. So the first one is um, Kate Soper's Here Be Sirens, which we premiered last spring, but are remounting. And so that is actually opening three days after I perform in the Resonant Bodies Festival. Kate, the composer, will be joining me for that song. We won't be all dressed up in our garb as sirens, but it'll be some of the music. And then I will also do a song from a piece that I've been developing with composer Dave Malloy. It's, he's writing it, and he's writing it for me and also singer Britton Ashford and cellist Brent Arnold. So the four of us are doing this piece, Ghost Quartet, at Bushwick Star in October. And so we're going to perform one of the numbers from that piece. I wanted to put a focus on composer performers in New York right now. That was part of why I really love the idea of doing one of Kate's pieces and one of Dave's pieces, particularly with them. It feels very special to be like, here's the composer that's going to now perform this piece with me. Even though Robert Ashley passed away, he is someone that I worked with and still feels very present to me as this icon of being a composer performer. I thought it would be nice to put a view of what's happening in the contemporary world in that way. The pieces also kind of use a range of different types of vocal techniques for me as a singer. Um, some of the music sounds more like folk singing, some of it sounds more like pop music, some of it sounds more like using operatic techniques, extended techniques. So I wanted to have a nice array of the places that the voice can go to. That said, there are a lot of other solo voice pieces that I do that use a lot more extended vocal technique. But because we're, you know, remounting Kate's piece a few days later, I did not want to kill my voice and then not have two days of rest. So I also decided to not do some of the pieces in my repertoire that are particularly virtuosic in terms of the way I'm using my voice in some sort of way that is not harsh if you can rest afterwards, but if you can't rest afterwards, it can be a problem. And I guess finally, knowing that I was going last, I just wanted some music that would be good night music. My feeling has always been as a singer, and this might be starting to seem less and less true, but was that I only do so many gigs, and because of that, I can rest. So I can do things that other singers might be nervous to do because I don't have a church gig every Sunday and I don't have a jazz gig every Thursday and Friday or whatever. The, the thing is, is there are certain vocal techniques that aren't that hard for me to do day after day after day, but there are some that are, that are just harsher on the voice. And I don't want to be someone who can't do that. I want to be able to do whatever I want to do. So it's definitely something that I always keep in mind with how I'm scheduling things. In undergrad, I was a double major in vocal performance, which actually I originally was a music composition major. And I did not like the way composition professors at my school basically wanted men who wrote symphonies. And I was a woman who didn't write symphonies. So <laughs> I left that major and became a vocal performance major, which in all honesty is like probably the best skill that I have gotten. And then I was also a theater directing major. So for most of my 20, early 20s, I thought I was going to be a theater director. I never thought I would be a 
singer. And then I also had a philosophy minor. At some point, I decided I didn't want to be a theater director. I didn't want that kind of lifestyle. This was around the time when I was doing a lot of singer, songwriter, pop music stuff. I have like two studio albums as a singer, songwriter, writing pop music. And I also made a decision that I didn't really want to go in that route because I didn't want to be on tour for the rest of my life, which was kind of the only way that a pop singer, songwriter was going to really make a living. So then I decided I should get a PhD in performance studies. So I went into the academy and I've been there ever since. Um, But because I went to NYU, I've been in New York and I basically started singing in the experimental world and basically flipped at some point where more of my energy was going into a vocal career and less of my energy was going into the academy. Having spent so much of my undergraduate experience directing theater and thinking about directing theater, that has made it into both how I create works and then also how I perform them, definitely. There are the projects that I do with ensembles that I'm a core member of. Um, So Thing NY is the one I've been with for the longest. We also have this group, Fair Speed, either performing these works of my friends, basically, or creating works together or arranging works together has been extremely influential on me as a performer and creator. I really think of the act of performing and the act of creating music as more and more overlapped. Those works with those groups has felt that way and has taught me a lot of how to negotiate that. And one of the things I wanted to do when I was younger, I wanted to direct new plays because I loved the developing work. And what's funny is that all that that I wanted to do in theater, I'm really doing as a singer. One of the works early on that where that really happened was working with Tom Swafford on This Is The Real Me. He would sketch some things out and then we would try it and then he'd go away and be like, okay, okay, I have this idea. And, and he'd be like, okay, try and improv on this kind of thing. And so I'd try something out and he would get an idea of what the possibilities are. And it was just a very influential experience for me to see how a performer and a composer can really work together. More recently, working on Crash, which was Robert Ashley's last opera, was probably one of the most intense experiences I've ever had working on a piece. One of the things that I really learned from Bob, especially working on Perfect Lives, was this idea of whether you're arranging someone else's work or just performing in it, how it is always most important to make it your own and to put your individual voice into it. And that it's the composer's job to create something that individuals can fit into. And that if you don't fit in there, like the composer hasn't done their job correctly, or you're miscast, or you should be doing something else, or, you know, I feel like that's becoming more and more of an important thing in the kind of landscape of what it means to be a singer in this private, in this present day. And there are definitely times where there are pieces that I feel like I'm going to get more punk rock with and take more liberties and pieces that should probably do exactly what it says to do. (laughs) I spent a lot of time trying to figure out when I was a singer songwriter in the more pop music world, um, because that felt very selfish and self-involved in certain ways. Um, especially when you're like, you know, new to New York and you're trying to get people to come to your shows and like, No one wants to go to another singer-songwriter show at Rockwood. I don't have the same kind of conversation about, is this just for myself or is this for other people? It feels like, okay, if me or someone else is creating something that is new and there's something that feels innovative about it, even if what is innovative kind of fails because it doesn't quite get there, that that feels historically important. Um, The idea that like I'm part of a culture that is creating itself and isn't just being nostalgic about another time, but is really looking at the time we're in. It's really great to think about, okay, what are things that I want to show? I think what's nice has been nice for me so far about um, the festival is it's made me really think about what I feel the present kind of landscape of vocal music is. And there are a lot of different topographies to that and so okay well what can I offer that I was really lucky to have an amazing 
um, voice teacher for six years in Pennsylvania who really just taught me the kind of technique that means I can just like go forward and I can rely on that. For a long time, I was like, oh, I'm, I didn't go to a conservatory, so I'm not as good as all these other people that I'm singing with. And I felt really insecure about it. Um, but I was like, well, you just got to keep going and, you know, whatever. I've learned so much by, A, the singers that I've worked with, and also with all the different kinds of techniques that composers have that I've worked with in the way they create music. I mean, there's some that just are like, here's a score, like make it your own. There are others that basically really want improvisers um, in order to, to mold something. I've learned tons from seeing all those different techniques, um, not just tons as a composer, but tons as a vocalist as well, that I don't think um, I ever got in the school situation. It's kind of like on the streets, operatic training, I guess. <laughs>